Oh, good day. My name is John, and this is another video in a series of videos that I'm doing on these Chinese diesel air heaters. And the subject of today's video is the uh, the two kilowatt heater. Now, I've got the th three heaters here. You can see the um, the two kilowatt, the five kilowatt, and the so-called eight kilowatt. Now, those who watched some of my videos in the past will know that there's no such thing as an 8 kilowatt heater at the time of doing this video. This 8 kilowatt is exactly the same as the 5 kilowatt, but rebranded and sold as an 8 kilowatt as a premium. So we can pretty much ignore this. So we'll come back between the, the 2 kilowatt and the 5 kilowatt. Now, a few important points that I'd like to bring out. Whether it's the, the 2 kilowatt, the 5 kilowatt, or the 8 kilowatt, this part here is exactly the same, no matter what heater you're using. So the exhaust, or the, this one here is the exhaust here, is exactly the same as the exhaust here. The combustion air inlet, he, inlet here is exactly the same as the combustion air inlet here. The fuel pickup is exactly the same. This gasket here and the spacing of the bolts are exactly the same. So if you do install a two kilowatt heater or you install a five kilowatt heater and then want to change because this one is too hot or this one is too cold, all it takes is just undoing the, the um, bolts, taking this one out and putting this one back in. So it's all exactly the same. Even the mounting plate is exactly the same. No matter what heater you're using. This one here is bent over a little bit. The, um, the other thing that I want to bring to your attention is the fuel pumps. This is the fuel pump for the 2 kilowatt. This is the fuel pump for the 5 kilowatt. This is the fuel pump for the so-called 8 kilowatt. Each one of these fuel pumps are exactly the same. They all put out 0.02 millilitres per pulse. Now I've checked all of these. I have a little measuring cylinder and I use my mechanical tester here and by counting out 100 pulses I can get 2 millilitres in here. So each one of these are exactly the same. Even the controllers can be swapped around. All right, the really, the only difference between the heaters is here, is the, the size and the hot air outlet. So this is a, the hot air outlet for the five, or you know, pretend eight kilowatt. And this here is a hot air outlet for the two kilowatt. So this one here is 60 millimeter inside diameter, and this one here 75 millimeter inside diameter. Now I've I've done the the weights for you, so if you want to know the difference between them, so you've got the two kilowatt. So these are the dimensions. Now when I say approximate, because it depends what sort of end fitting they might have on them but they're all you know they're very much the same some have a different end fitting um, this one here for instance got this type of end fitting this one here's got a, a bit different type of end fitting so there's a, a slight variance mainly in the, the end fitting here are the widths the height the fan diameter and I'll show you this in a minute there's your hot air now here are the weights this one's about 2.8 kilograms and these are about four kilograms or 6.3 pounds and nine pounds for these. All right, I'll um, open them up and I'll just show you the inside in a second. Here we have the three heaters with the top cover removed. Now I'll show you some other things here. Electronic control unit, ECU, are the same. In fact, this one here is 
exactly the same as this one here. In fact, I suspect these have got the, these are the same manufacturer. They've got the same the same brandings on them. And it's also interesting. One of the first things I check when I I just see if the fan rubs because occasionally you get them with the fan rub. Now it's interesting that I've got a two different heaters bought at different times from the same manufacturer. This one's a two kilowatt. This one here is a so-called eight kilowatt. This one here, I can feel a slight rubbing of the fan, and I'll show you a bit more of that later. This one here also rubbed the fan, and what's interesting is that I let this run a little bit and to see what would happen, and it actually melted the casing, but not the fan itself. Now, if it does scrape the fan, it's not such a, a big deal because what it means is, is when they did the molding here for the case, this little part down here, where it sits in here was not quite right and um, it might only be you know half a millimeter out before the fan scraps because the tolerance is so f fine the other interesting thing the glow plugs all exactly the same the temperature sensor in the three of the heaters all exactly the same the fan diameter on these three heaters all exactly the same the fan motor, the same. The only difference is, is these are all 100 millimeter diameter. The only difference is these two heaters have a, um, a 75 millimeter opening here. And this one here just has a 60 millimeter opening. Now, the only difference between these three heaters is the size of the heat exchange and the combustion um, unit inside so this is smaller now in theory if you put the same amount of diesel into this heater you should get the same amount of output as you put the same amount of diesel in here so if you put I don't know 100 milliliters of diesel and burn it then it should produce the same output that's in theory but in practice it's not quite so much like that because what you have is you've got the heat exchanger here. This is a much smaller heat exchanger. You've got a smaller diameter inlet here going over the heat exchanger, much smaller fins. So the, the actual airflow going over here and the volume of air and the heated surface area of this heater is quite significantly more than the surface area of the heat exchanger in this here. Now if you look here, the, these fins are quite, quite shallow as compared to the, the depth of the fins in here. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Now I've set the um, two kilowatt heater up for a test run. It came with this little manual controller. So I've just turned the power on and you can see with absolutely nothing on, we're drawing about 0 0.04, 0 0.05 of an amp. All right, I'll turn it on. It'll go through its startup cycle. The fan will start spinning first. Then it will turn the glow plug on, then the fuel pump on, and then it'll try a start. As we can see with a fan running up, pulling about five or six amps. When the glow plug starts, it'll pull 10 amps. All right, this will take a, um, a few minutes to get up and running and I'll come back. The heater failed to start. And I'm not sure if you can see there, but there's three LEDs flashing. Now, these little manual controllers also give you an error code. In the um, LED controllers, it'll come up with a EO3. Here, if you see three LEDs flashing, it's the same thing, it's a three error. Now, a normal three error means that the, the glow plug is not lighting. Now, I suspect, because I haven't used this battery for a while, that it couldn't draw uh, or provide the 10 amps to start the glow plug. So I'll just plug it in and uh, see if that's the problem. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I've connected the battery charger. Um, this time the heater is firing up. See, it's pulling about nine amps, nine and a half amps there. I hadn't used this battery for a while 
and it was a bit flat so it it registered over 12 volts on the um, on the terminals and it was not in use but as soon as the heater tried to pull 10 amps to start the glow plug or light the glow plug it couldn't so we got a an error code an 03 error code all right the heater's working its way through its cycle I won't um, waste time here and I'll come back when it's up and running properly okay the heater's firing up the glow plug is turned off and so the um, the amp drawer is dropped down about two and a half amps drawer there you can see the little cavitation bubbles coming through the fuel line Our outlet temperature is starting to increase. What we're very interested in is not the absolute temperature, but the increase from here, which is the ambient temperature, to what's coming out at the end of our pipe there. All right, I'll let it settle a bit more and I'll come back in a bit. Okay, there's the heater running at uh, flat out. It's running at um, 10, 10 bars on the, on the little controller. We're going from 18 degrees C to 106, 107 degrees C. We're running about 12.6, 12.5 meters per second. So just our temperature increase, we're going from 18 105 now I cannot tell the pulse rate of what this little controller is, is putting out so what I what I do is I come around here where I can hear it Put the, uh, the stopwatch on, I have my little hand counter, and I can get fairly, fairly accurate. It's, <laughs> it's pretty hard to hear at that flat chat, but I'm, I'm counting 300 counting 300 on the uh, the little counter a minute divided by six so so we're getting about five roughly five hertz so about five beats a second on the lower speeds it's much more accurate and I can do it a bit better but so roughly it's about the same as a normal controller anyway I'll run it down now to um, lower speed and I'll come back all right the little heater is stabilized here on one um, one bar LED on the manual controller we're drawing about um, 0 0.5 0 0.6 of an amp to run it at that low speed on this um, low speed it's easy for me to count the um, the pulses on the um, the little fuel pump, so I can see what the hertz rate it's running at. So I just and then just count. I've done it three times actually, and um, when I divide the uh, do it for a minute, then divide by sixty, and it comes out to one point six hertz, which is very similar to what um, the normal other controllers do. Our temperature increase is good from about 18 degrees Celsius up to 100 degrees Celsius. Mm. 
All right, be back in a bit. Okay, um, running at a medium speed on here on the manual controller, which is um, five five bars of the LED. A little counter here gives me about three hertz. All right, I'll shut it down now, and what I'll do then is connect up an LED controller. Alright, I've connected um, a standard LED controller and we'll fire it up now so I can, we can manually do the, um, the pulse rate. Alright, it'll take a few minutes to start up and I'll come back in a bit. Okay, um, we're running this at 1.6 hertz. Everything's looking good. Um, have an increase in temperature of about um, 80 degrees C. All running the same as before. Now I'll run it up to about 3 hertz, which is about mid range. Alright, I'll let that run up and uh, I'll come back. Okay, the heat is up and running at a um, manual pulse rate of 3 hertz. We're looking at um, much the same increase in temperature, about uh, 80 degrees increase in temperature. We're drawing, you know, 1.2 1, 1 amps, which is running the fan, and. Um, Got about 64, 65 decibels of sound coming through with this with this muffler on. Running very clean, you know. There's no carbon monoxide getting detected here at all. Which is only nine inches from the um, the exhaust, although it's an open area. But uh, if you run that with a car exhaust, that'd be going off like crazy. All right, I'll take it up and see what happens if we run it up to maximum here. Actually, it won't go to max, I'll go to 5 hertz. The ambient temperature is probably a little bit high to run it right up because we don't want to heat, overheat the little heater. Alright, I'll let it run up and I'll come back. Alright, the heater's running at 5 hertz. Pulling much the same air volume through as before. Drawing about two amps to make the heater work, which is running the fan mostly, also running the LEDs here. Increase in temperature, running about uh, a little bit more. So we're getting between 80 and 85 degrees increase in temperature. So the heater's running very well. The, um, the sound. About 67 decibels. Which is about the same as the bigger heater. Alright, I'll just shut it down. It'll go through its uh, cool down cycle and um, I'll come back at the end. What it's doing now is it's slowing the fan down, it'll turn the glow plug on. You'll see the, the amperage increase. As it tries to blow out and ignite any unburned fuel. Alright, be back shortly. Okay, the little heater has um, done its cool down cycle, turned itself off. But as you'll notice here, the LED controller is still alight and 
we are drawing about 0.08 of an amp to 0.09 of an amp without anything running. So it's advisable to put a, a master switch in the battery line. The other thing that's important to note is that if you do put the master switch on in, it's very important that it can't be accidentally turned off. So you, people won't mistake it for a light switch or whatever because if you turn the master switch off when the heat is running, it won't be able to do its cool down cycle and you can get a serious overheat problem here. It won't catch fire, but you'll destroy the electronic control unit inside the heater. The other issue you need to consider is that if you're running it from a battery, and I always recommend you run it directly from the battery, you don't run the, the heater through a, a distribution box or anything, the wires to the heater should run directly from the battery, and you must increase the size of the wire. This is very minimum size to run 10 amps for the heater startup. So greatly increase the wire size, particularly if you're extending this wire. Okay, just recapping now on the two kilowatt heater. If you have a, a small caravan, a small motorhome, uh, say a rooftop tent, these make excellent little heaters. If you have a spacious issue, these heaters make excellent little heaters because you can fit these under a seat. And, um, in particular in a truck or, or whatever. One issue that you need to be aware of though is that in theory if you burn the same amount of diesel you should produce the same amount of heat. So if you burn the same amount of diesel in that heater you should produce the same amount of heat in this heater. But in practice that's not the case. Because of inefficiencies in here with a smaller heat exchanger, the smaller throughput of the air this heater burns nearly twice as much fuel to produce the same amount of heat. Remember it's got the same fuel pump, it's got um, the same dosing system. So if on a mid running, this heater will produce, say, um, if you're running it at, say, uh, 3 hertz, with that, well, let's say we go up to 5 hertz. So we run it at 5 hertz, this heater will produce around 2 kilowatts of power. If you run this heater at 5 hertz, drawing the same amount of fuel, this heater will produce about 5 kilowatts of heat. The other thing you need to be aware of too is if you have a problem with your power, this running flat out at, because the fan, it's a fan that uses the, um, the power, also some of the LED controller, but the fan mostly. Running flat out, this will pull about, I don't know, up around 2.83 amps of power, amp hours of power. And this one running flat out pulls the same, about 3 amps of power. But for the same heat output, this one here could be running at half speed and, and pulling, a, say, 1.5 amps of power, while this one's pulling 3 amps of power. Now, my personal opinion in all these heaters is that it's better to get a a bigger heater and run it slower than a smaller heater than to run it faster. Anyway, I hope that gives you some understanding in the operation of uh, a 2 kilowatt heater and the difference between a 2 kilowatt heater and a 5 kilowatt heater. Alright, thank you for watching.